the assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Keith Christopher Rowley, Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. I have great pleasure in welcoming His Excellency Keith Rowley, Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, and I invite him to address the assembly. Mr. President, it's an honor to address this August Assembly of States at this 78th session of the United Nations General Assembly. I stand before you on behalf of a proud nation which is celebrating the leadership of the General Assembly for the next year by the son of the soil of Trinidad and Tobago. We are proud of you, Mr. President. I again extend warmest congratulations to you on behalf of the government and people of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, and you are assured of our full support. I also wish to express our deepest gratitude to, our prede to your predecessor, His Excellency Saba Karusi, for ably guiding our work during the 77th session. Permit me, Mr. President, to express our deepest condolences to and solidarity with the government and people of Morocco, as well as the government and people of Libya on the recent tragedies which have resulted in the significant loss of lives, livelihoods, and destruction of property. Mr. President, at the midpoint of the journey for the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals and the 2030 Agenda, a sober reflection would leave many observers with a pessimistic feeling that the world is in peril and that we are at risk of significantly falling short of ensuring that no one is left behind. We have seen an array of cascading crises in many parts of the world. Recently, the Secretary General sounded the alarm that the period of global warming had ended and that the era of global boiling has arrived. Investments in instruments of war have far surpassed investments in instruments of peace and peace building. Some protracted conflicts are continuing with little signs of ceasefire, and others continue to erupt and escalate with disturbing consequences. All of these contribute to the waning spirit of multilateralism in our United Nations, the very purpose for which this organization was built. We have seen glimmers of hope extinguished by the darkness of despair, where the most vulnerable of the global population are made to pay the highest price. The cards of the international financial system remain heavily stacked against Global South, thereby inhibiting the prospect of these countries to achieve economic growth and sustainable development. Against this backdrop, Mr. President, I ask, is this the legacy that we would leave for future generations? Mr. President, Trinidad and Tobago, as a responsible member of this organization, is committed to doing its part to achieve sustainable development and international peace and security for all. However, our ability to safely navigate our destiny to the harbor of sustainable development by 2030 is stymied by challenges and threats, some of which are existential. One such threat is the proliferation and use of illegal firearms in our society, which just like in other jurisdictions, bring untold suffering to many families and communities and the nation as a whole. Only today, Mr. President, we experience the loss of life of five members of one family killed by an assailant with an assault weapon. Mr. President, this situation has worsened largely because of the accelerated commercial availability 
coupled with, Ill with illegal trafficking from countries of manufacture into the almost defenseless territories of the Caribbean. In a population of 1.4 million people in Trinidad and Tobago, we experienced over 600 murders last year, 90% of which involved handguns and increasingly assault weapons. Within our best efforts and a huge consumption of our already scarce resources, we have seen over 400 violent firearms-driven killings already this year. Mr. President, this is a crisis shared by almost all the Caribbean territories and is to be added to the challenges that stand in the way of any successful tackling of the development goals already identified. Mr. President, Trinidad and Tobago, both individually and as part of the Caribbean community CARICOM, has attempted to devise solutions and interventions to address these challenges meaningfully and holistically. For this reason, earlier this year, Trinidad and Tobago hosted the CARICOM Regional Symposium to address crime and violence as a public health issue as we felt that it was incumbent to promote and encourage dialogue aimed at reducing violence and preventing crime in our society. In this context, we are cognizant of the need for cooperation at all levels. Accordingly, Trinidad and Tobago remains fully committed to the Arms Trade Treaty and its stated objectives. We also look forward to continue to work collaboratively with our regional and international partners, especially the United States, to urgently stem the illicit trade of illegal firearms, most, most of which are produced by gun manufacturers and promoters based in this country. We acknowledge and appreciate the recent and ongoing support of the United States in linking arms with Trinidad and Tobago and the wider CARICOM in confronting this metastasizing scourge, which not only disturbs our safety, but threatens our sense of security and even the very democratic states themselves. Mr. President, we acknowledge that the proliferation of violent crime, concomitant with other escalating crises, provides fertile conditions to destabilize any country. It is in this context that Trinidad and Tobago supports CARICOM's position that all nations respect the Caribbean Sea as a zone of peace. Consequently, Trinidad and Tobago, as it fights its own battles in this area, remains deeply concerned over the developments in our fellow CARICOM country, Haiti, that are causing unimaginable humanitarian socio-economic and security consequences. We applaud the decision of the government of Kenya to offer to help lead a multinational unit in Haiti and welcome the decision of the governments of the Bahamas and Jamaica to contribute personnel to it. Rwanda's offer to help is also very significant and commendable. We also urge the international community to collaborate with Haiti towards the achievement of a credible solution to its current crisis that would guarantee that the country and its people are not left behind. I recall the exhortation by Trinidad and Tobago's iconic Calypsonian David Rudder in his timeless classic, and I quote Mr. President, when David Rudder says, Haiti, I'm sorry, where he intoned, and I could continue to quote, I refuse to believe that we, good people, would forever turn our hearts and eyes away. Haiti, I'm sorry. We misunderstood you. One day we'll turn our heads and look inside you." Unquote. Mr. President, that day has come. That day is now. We, the United Nations gathered here, must prioritize authorization for the external help that Haiti desperately needs. Mr. President, just like anywhere else in the world, 
Haiti deserves peace. Haiti deserves prosperity. Haiti deserves progress, and Haiti deserves sustainability. Haiti requires the intervention of the United Nations now. I wish to assure you that Trinidad and Tobago, as an honest broker, remains fully committed to working with the government of Haiti and all other stakeholders to arrive at an indigenous solution to comprehensively address the crisis in that country. Mr. President, Trinidad and Tobago is of the view that in order to rebuild trust and reignite global solidarity, there must be universal adherence to the Charter of the United Nations and international law. Respect for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all states must be paramount and permanent. It is in this connection that we continue to register our dismay and disappointment in the ongoing hostilities following the military action against Ukraine. Mr. President, though we are geographically far removed from the threat of the conflict, we are not unaffected. It is indeed disappointing that the Black Sea Grain Initiative, which assisted in stabilizing global food prices and potentially protecting millions from the threat of famine, starvation, that has been terminated. We noted with great anxiety that global food prices during the month of July rose for the first time in months. This situation is of priority concern for the CARICOM community as we acknowledge that food security remains a crucial issue for our region and is a vital component in our quest to achieve the 2030 agenda. Mr. President, it is also regrettable that after all this time, a credible solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict remains elusive. In this regard, Trinidad and Tobago reiterates its strong support for a two-state solution based on mutual understanding, tolerance, and respect, which would serve as a foundation for Israel and Palestine to live as peaceful, responsible neighbors. We continue to urge both sides to recommit to a just, lasting, and comprehensive solution that would ensure peace, prosperity, progress, and sustainability for all. Mr. President, 2023 marks two very important milestones for the international community as we commemorate the 75th anniversary of the adoption of the United De Nation, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, as well as the 25th anniversary of the adoption of the Treaty of Rome. As a country, as a country that has been a long-standing advocate of the International Criminal Court, Trinidad and Tobago congratulates the court on this achievement. In recognizing this milestone, we remember and pay tribute to an outstanding pioneer of the court, the late Arthur N. R. Robinson, former Prime Minister and President of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. We have seen sufficient evidence to be convinced that his efforts, which in part resulted in the creation of the International Criminal Court, were not in vain. For this reason, Trinidad and Tobago remains steadfast in its support of the work and mandate of the court, as we believe that access to justice is a critical element towards achieving sustainable peace. We therefore continue to urge those countries that have not done so to submit to the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court so that it can comprehensively fulfill its mandate as a truly universal court. Mr. President, while we acknowledge that the International Criminal Court provides a beacon of hope for access to justice, we also recognize that it is an absolute injustice that 75 years after the adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, there still exists discrimination 
and the Caribbean nations and so many others is directly attributed to the unpaid debt for centuries of enslavement and economic exploitation of African people by Europeans. The descendants of these people populate the Caribbean islands where they struggle manfully against the residual rigors of these historic crimes, even as they are visited by the worst effects of climate change and the constant threat of exclusion from the world's mainstream financial systems. In this regard, Trinidad and Tobago continues to call for bold, decisive action to ensure reparatory justice for the untold suffering of millions of people in the developing world. We would welcome Africa's support in this quest for justice. Mr. President, it is undeniable that climate change is an existential threat to all of us and does not recognize geographical boundaries. We also acknowledge that our people, the people of the small island developing states, those who bear the, le the least culpability for the climate crisis are the ones who continue to be most disproportionately affected. The experts have told us that this past July was the hottest month on record and that global ocean temperatures were also at record levels. Most disconcertingly, we noted with justifiable alarm the recent dire warning by scientists that without ambitious climate action, we will exceed the critical 1.5 degrees Celsius temperature threshold. However, recent developments have shown that over ambitious net zero targets ought not to be forced upon small island nations. Mr. President, we are called upon to be game changers on this issue. We have a responsibility for the survival and continued existence of life on this planet that no other generation of leaders has had. A global stock take at COP28 is crucial. The global stock take must result in a roadmap that brings the world nearer to the track by ensuring that NDCs are aligned with the 1.5 degree temperature goal. Nationally determined contributions must become nationally implemented contributions. Trinidad and Tobago is in the process of implementing its commitment to installing some infrastructure for sustainable energy supply. We urge developed countries to increase their support for the second replenishment of the Green Climate Fund. In these commitments, if they're made, we will be honored in full sooner rather than later. They would go a long way towards rebuilding trust and reigniting global solidarity, particularly for the global south. Mr. President, the global economic crisis has landed heavily on the developing world, with small island developing states such as Trinidad and Tobago and our Caribbean neighbors facing the harshest impacts of the socio-economic fallout. For this reason, the next 10-year program of action will be crucial to ensuring that no one is left behind. We call on the international community to lend its support for the fourth international conference on small island developing states and to reach an ambitious and transformative global blueprint that will drive the sustainable development ambitions of small island developing nations towards long-term resilient prosperity. We will also continue to advocate that international financial institutions should be sensitive to the specific circumstances of developing countries and the challenges that they face. Trinidad and Tobago therefore reiterates its support for the development of a multidimensional vulnerability index, the Bridgetown Initiative, and any other effort that addresses the most pressing needs of developing countries, including those encountering liquid, liquidity challenges and debt distress. Mr. President, earlier this year, 
Trinidad and Tobago welcomed the landmark adoption of the agreement on the, under the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea on the conservation and sustainable use of marine biological diversity of areas beyond national jurisdiction. Trinidad and Tobago actively participated in the negotiations along with its CARICOM partners. We are fully confident that when this treaty enters into force, the benefits will redound to all of humankind. Mr. President, the 2030 Agenda envisions a revitalized global partnership for sustainable development based on a spirit of strengthened global solidarity. It would, however, be impossible, Mr. President, for our sisters and brothers in Cuba to achieve these goals if the anachronistic economic, commercial, and financial embargo imposed against that country remains in place. For over six decades, the people of Cuba have been grappling with significantly diminished prospects for charting a course towards prosperity, meaningful progress, and sustainable development. To this end, Trinidad and Tobago reiterates its call for the unconditional lifting of the economic, commercial, and financial embargo against Cuba, and certainly for its removal from any unjustified listing as an alleged state sponsor of terrorism. Mr. President, despite our challenges, 2023 has been a momentous year for us in CARICOM. In addition to your election as President of the General Assembly, we recently celebrated in Port of Spain the 50th anniversary of the Caribbean community under the theme, 50 Years Strong, a solid foundation to build on. It was indeed a confluence of celebratory events as we all rejoiced over the election of CARICOM members to major UN bodies. In this regard, we congratulate Guyana on its election as a non-permanent member of the United Nations Security Council, as well as Haiti and Suriname on their election to the Economic and Social Council. Mr. President, guided by our charter and the spirit of multilateralism, we can use the popular aphorism as inspiration. And I quote, coming together is the beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success, unquote. If we were to apply that maxim, I have no doubt that we can achieve peace, prosperity, progress, and sustainability for all. Mr. President, Trinidad and Tobago will be doing its part. We continue to stand on our principles to deploy our diplomacy and leadership in the service of the common good, to uphold international law, and to work with member states in our commitment to leave this world safer, healthier, and better. Mr. President, I thank you for your attention, and I thank my colleagues. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago for the statement just delivered, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency.